within thee. Know that as the sand entereth into the oyster and produceth the pearl, so hath the trials and the tribulations which ye have endured entered into thee and hath produced a pearl of great price. Know that thou art my beloved and know that these are the days of the great unfolding of thy God within thee. So my people, I say unto thee this night, enter into that secret place, that place of humility, that place of purity, that place of greater surrender, saith thy God, that I may be unfolded within thee. For truly therein lies the glory of thy God upon thee. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you. 
great river, saith the Lord. Uh, yea, I you surely move, yea, along the lines of least resistance, saith thy God. But yea, I say unto thee, one and all, yea, I am getting ready to flood the banks, saith the Lord. And yea, overflow, saith the Lord, and even to the highways, that I may catch men in. Yea, that I may catch them men, uh, men into the river, saith the Lord. And yea, the Lord saith unto thea yea, think not what thou dost feel, yea, is a erosion in thine own life. No, no, no. Yea, it is the river. Yea, it is the Lord of the river. Yea, flooding thy banks. And yea, melting down all the areas. Yea, where resistances have been. Yea, that I may catch the wayfarers on the highways. And yea, sweep them too in. Yea, for I am also the Lord of the harvest. Uh, and I say unto thee, yea, there shall be a great harvest. Yea, for wheat is ripe for picking and yea I say even the wheat fields yea shall have the flood of the river of the Lord uh, for yea I shall bring men in in his boats as in boats to harvest the wheat for so great is the harvest saith thy God There's no one else like you, Lord. No one else like you, Lord. No one else like you. For you are great. You do me.
your holy Lord. There's no one like you. Lord, you know, we wonder sometimes, are there higher rooms? There's a closer place. He said, there's a place by me. And I heard those words as the prophecies were coming forth. Thy gentleness has made me great. I don't know about you. I desire that. I desire that in my life. The Lord is speaking wonderful things to us tonight. He said, there's going to be change. How many heard that? He said, there was going to be a change from the beginning of the service. There was such a oneness, a unity. It began to flow from the songs of glory. Hallelujah. I think we're all at that altar of change, aren't we? Yes. Just let him do it. You don't have to wait for the summer. You don't have to wait till tomorrow morning. Just let the decisions be made now. Hallelujah. to him again.
like you, Lord. No one else like you, Lord. No one. No one. No one. Hallelujah. No one like you, Lord. No one. No one. No one. Hallelujah. Let's just give the Lord a great praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him a great praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Well, he's speaking to us about pure waters. Pure things. How many heard that tonight? Who wants the pure thing? I do. I want the real thing. We've just had a glory cascading over us all day today. We left early this morning to attend the funeral of a departed saint in the church. She passed away Sunday afternoon. Such a glory came into the place. I believe it's just continued to carry us into greater things with such a presence of God. Wonderful words of life spilled out over the people. I felt his presence. I felt his lifting. But I just thought about those angels that were there, and one had a bell and was getting ready to ring it Sunday afternoon when we were visiting her. You could tell she was past talking to anyone, but her spirit could hear. And the other angel said, not yet. She has a few more moments. You know, God counts hours as moments. And, you know, we're cherishing these moments we have together. We have with one another. I felt that preceding that word that was given last week, sometimes the Lord said in the next seven months, that would be the end of this year, that we were going to see great changes. And before he said to us, we'd see some change, some, such great changes, we wouldn't recognize ourselves. I've been looking in the mirror. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been looking, have you been looking in the Word? Hallelujah. I've been looking in the Word. I'm seeing the difference, wanting the difference, expecting the difference. Come on. I'm experiencing the difference in my soul. Oh, experiencing it in my heart, in the things that I partake of. Amen. I'm experiencing it. And His love, His banner over us is great tonight. And, you know, we're going to have, the Lord spoke to us earlier, and He said, there would be many times after services at night that we would not want to eat. We wouldn't desire to eat. This was a word that came to me, that we would not desire to eat, that we would only desire to linger longer in his presence, that we would just suddenly be carried away into new dominions of glory. Amen. Just go and rest in his presence and let that new thing take place. Let that new impartation come into our hearts and our lives. That God's going to raise up new people. New people. New people are going to come to the forefront. Ones that we hadn't experienced, Sister Ruth, hadn't expected. God's going to bring to the forefront. I've been looking for help, haven't you? <laughs> I've been looking for help. I've been looking for those to come and get me on the right and on the left. And say, come on, let's go. Hallelujah. Just come on, help lift my hands, lift my arms, lift Sister Ruth's hands. Lift Sister Ruth's arms. We're looking for you. God's already spoken to your hearts. He's going to bring you forth. Get ready for the change. Be ready for the change. The Lord said to us also, there was a number of prophecies last week. He said, there are those that I'm going to raise up that you didn't expect. Hallelujah. And he knows that his arm is not short tonight. Amen. His hand is extended to raise up. He said, I can pull down. I can pluck up in a moment. I can establish my word. How many of you want God to do it? Well, he does it in the, the change. We have our we have a new couple that's just joined us. They came with all of their worldly goods. <laughs> just lift your hands. He, they came with their instruments. They didn't come empty-handed. He said, "I have a bass fiddle, and she has a guitar." They were here this morning. They have packed up everything. Give, he's given up a good job. He's changing courses. That, isn't that good? Very good. He's changing courses. The Lord said they'd come in boats. That means we'll find the water courses. 
and move in them. But um, he knows a little bit about land and about changing the land, and we're happy they're both here. They're happy people. Look at them. God wants us to be happy, happy for the change, happy for the move, happy for what God's doing. I mean, you'll have to forgive me because, you know, many times we know people by face and by the Spirit. God knows us by name. They don't even know their name. <laughs> Bill and Cheryl. Walter. Bill and Cheryl. I remember the Bill and the Cheryl. Amen. But he practically laid all winter camp on the floor up here. God was just letting him know in case he had other ideas, this is where he had planted him. Amen. Well, he said, I'll cause you to lie down in green pastures. Amen. so touched. I don't believe you'd been here before winter camp. No, winter camp came and and stayed in the glory, and God had already spoken to them while they were here, but they went home to see if it lasted, you know, if that, <laughs> and, and that desire and that glory just remained and abided, and then uh, just two months ago, he gave his his resignation, and uh, they're they're down here. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> oh, hallelujah! Let's give them a great hand of welcome. I tell you, she's happy. Hallelujah! Amen. Well, sometimes it takes a lot to make a wife happy. Well, he's found a good thing. Amen. Well, the glory of the Lord is being revealed in all of our lives. And the blessings of the Lord are making rich, and you all know that, don't you? The wonderful, yes. So he does wallpaper, does he? <laughs> everybody's telling everybody's secrets. We've been look. They we're looking for those kind of hands. Hallelujah. Well, we're glad you're all advancing. We're all advancing forward. The wonderful Lord is doing it all for each and every one of us. Sister Ruth is back. She's been away for a little while. She's been traveling in more than one city and more than one congregation and great and wonderful things the Lord is doing. She's been sharing a few of those precious things with us today. We've been together most of the day, and God has been good to us, so... You just believe as she stands tonight as he declares his glory. We're going to receive the offering at this time. God is up to something good. Something good. He's up to something good. The Holy Ghost looks out of me continually. Keeps telling me God's up to something good. God's up to something good. God is up to something good. Something good, he's up to something good. The Holy Ghost looks out of me continually, keeps telling me, God's up to something good. God's up to something good. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for your offerings, your gifts. We just, amen. Let's stand, if you will, everyone that's in here tonight. Praise the Lord and just let's sing that song to God be the glory for what he has done to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be
the Lord a great praise as Sister Ruth comes tonight. God bless you. God's doing in me is for eternity. What God maketh of me is for eternity. It's not. several wonderful days this week. I was in New Bern ministering first for Brother Glenn Garland and then for the Assembly of God pastor. And um, it was interesting, the Assembly of God pastor had read my book, been trying to contact us. Didn't get any reply. <coughs> and uh, Anyway, he was praying, believing God for the contact, and he said, this is the way God did it. Joe and Henry, in fact, uh, Joe McLeese, you know, they've been going to a spiritual Methodist church, but we're desiring a little more. And he said to his wife, you know, I've been driving by this assembly church. He'd never been to an assembly of God church in America. He'd only been to... <laughs> A few months ago, he had preached in an assembly church in Singapore and one in Borneo, but had never been to one here in America. And he said, said to his wife, let's try that church tomorrow morning that I've been driving by on the way to work. He said he had just come in and sat down in the service, and the pastor said, you know, God has told me that Sister Ruth is going to bring revival to our church. I've been trying to get a hold of her. Haven't been able to do it, but uh, <laughs> God has told me he'll bring revival through her. Well, of course, Joe knew how to get a hold of us. <laughs> and uh, when he spoke to me about going down and speaking for Brother Hogan at the Crossroads Church in Newburn, I said, well, I'm going to be down at Sister Delano's on Thursday night anyway, perhaps Tuesday and Wednesday before. I said, let the, let the assembly brother choose the night he wants. But I said, we can't be in New Bern without blessing Brother Glenn Garland, who was raised here at the camp. 
So the pastor chose Wednesday night, and <laughs> Glenn was pleased for Tuesday. I tell you, we had air, we had standing room only. Not only standing room only, they were hanging out the windows outside the door. <laughs> And you can imagine, they had to have all the brothers stand so the sisters could sit down. And well, there wasn't even room to pray for anybody. You know, we were, <laughs> as far as laying hands and ministering, he, Glenn and, and Davine were just thrilled. I think he said there were more than 200. And uh, normally they run about 25 people. So he was, <laughs> he was so blessed. And uh, <laughs> the people gave a good offering, and God spoke to me to give him half of it. <laughs> so they were doubly blessed. <laughs> they were just thrilled. And my, what a move of the Spirit. Brother Hogan said on Tuesday night, he said, it's better than I thought it was going to be. You know, you always are afraid that they'll invite you and want their money back cash refund if not satisfied <laughs> Wednesday night well in fact Glenn said to me you want to preach tomorrow morning I said whatever you folks want so uh, they put on a morning service over at the assembly church and we had, we had a quite a meeting and then Wednesday night packed out this large assembly of God church just packed down. They had never had a service like, <laughs> like Wednesday night. Over that night, we had a little room in the aisles. The aisles were bigger, and we could pray for people, and they were up and down the aisle on the floor and all across the front. And, and the other exciting thing was that Joe brought two North Carolina representatives and they'd come all the way from Raleigh over. So, you know, that's a long way to come to New Bern, a couple of hours drive. One Presbyterian, I think the other one <laughs> was Baptist, never been in a spirit-filled meeting before. <laughs> but they were so responsive. And afterwards, Brother Joe and Sister Henry had a little reception at their house, you know, with all that good seafood they have down in that area. And the representative stayed on, and we, <laughs> we fellowshiped and had a wonderful time. Oh, God's re In fact, in the service that night, I looked and I saw the Lord in the North Carolina legislature. <laughs> we are going to see God moving in our, our state legislatures as well as our national one. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's not going to be one organization untouched by this revival untouched not one organization untouched then last night we were down at sister barbara's standing room only i think they had them sitting out in the sunday school rooms and out behind the pulpit and and uh, we just had to turn the whole church into the altar area and just lead them in the altar service collectively together <laughs> no room to pray that's what God, there's a hunger. There's a hunger out there. <coughs> People are hungry for a move of the Spirit of God. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, they're hungry. Now, this is the word the Lord gave me a moment ago as we're standing here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'll start with verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, we have, not, have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now the word that God gave me, and I just want to read it, the verse out loud again. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the, spirit, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to know the things of God. <laughs> the only way I can know the things of God are not by my Spirit, but by His Spirit. Amen. I cannot know the things of God by the Spirit of the world, by the Spirit even that is in man. Oh, no, we cannot know the things of God by the natural. It only comes in the supernatural. It comes in the realm of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need these gatherings in which we just stand in his presence praising. We stand in his presence worshiping. One of the things that I've seen with the revival in most places that I have been, they're either orientated toward salvation or orientated toward healing, but there's very little orientation toward knowing the things of the Spirit. But God has got to raise a church up that know the things of the Spirit, that know the ways of the Spirit, that know the mind of the Spirit. And we can only know it being taught of the Spirit of the living God. And we have to allow God to do it. Now, yesterday morning, we didn't have a, a morning service, and we'd been up very late the night before, and about mid-morning, Sister Delano called, and she said, I just wanted to know when you're coming over to Greenville. It's about an hour away. And I said, well, I was planning to come over right, right around lunchtime or around that time. Why? And she said, well, we're, we're coming over to New Bern we're going to be going and we're going to attend this course and uh, she said, maybe you'd like to come. And I just suddenly said, no. I, I've been pretty busy. I'm just going to be lazy this morning. That's what I said to her. But when I hung up, I knew I didn't want to spend a morning hearing the wisdom of man. If she had invited me over for a good praise session, <laughs> a good worship session, a good session in the glory of the Lord, I'd have been, I said, go. Oh, Give me 10 minutes to get ready. Come by, pick me up. <laughs> I'd have been on the way out the door. But we have learned through these years that you can only know the things of the Spirit by the Spirit of God. And that which God is doing in this last day can only be done by the Spirit, as Brother said. As we pray, we begin to get the mind of God concerning how to do it and what to do and how God's plan and God's program is going forth. I had that interesting experience a week or so ago in Denmark. We had, I had just flown in from Sweden. I'd been busy. I'd already just come from, from Berlin and England and then to Sweden, now coming to Denmark. And that particular day was so hot, and they picked me up at the airport, and we immediately got in the car to start driving toward the ferry several hours, and I was in the front seat, and the heat was beaming down. And, you know, you get a little more weary in that kind of heat. 
And then we got on the ferry, and that was uh, the trip down was a couple of hours, and got on the ferry, and that was another hour, and we got to the hotel, beautiful hotel, but we discovered that all the dining rooms and the were, were full, and, and we couldn't have any supper till about 8 o'clock, and about 9 o'clock we went in. They had invited me a night early with all of the leaders of the Aglo from all over Denmark, that we were going to have a prayer meeting. Well, by 9 o'clock, I was beginning to feel <laughs> my travels. And uh, we went into the auditorium, and she said, now you know you're leading it. Well, I didn't know. <laughs> but she did instruct me. She said, usually we lay hands on every seat. And we pray for every seat. <laughs> I looked at those 400 seats. <laughs> Big, bright green sheets. Uh, seats. And I thought, oh my. <coughs> Lord, who got me into this one? But I sat down at the piano and I began to just lead out in spontaneous worship. Uh, and as I began to lead out <laughs> in spontaneous worship, we just began to go into the glory. And suddenly, I wasn't thinking about those seats, I promise you. But I had a vision. And I saw tongues of fire come down and sit upon every seat. And I began to declare what I was seeing. I was so grateful to the Lord. <laughs> you never saw anybody more grateful than I. Tongues of fire on 400 seats. We didn't have to go around. And you know, I, the, I tell you, these are glow intercessors. They don't just give a little word over, you know. They, you, they really get down to business over every seat. I could see it would take about two hours to get those 400 seats prayed for. <laughs> but you know the Lord in a moment's time, oh yes, in a moment's time when the glory came in, hallelujah, God had a plan. And it was such a simple plan. And suddenly we saw that fire come down <coughs> upon the seats, uh, hallelujah, of uh, that confidence that God had done it. Uh, and in the next three days of the convention, we saw the manifestation uh, of the fire that had come down on the seats uh, because it began to come down on the people uh, that were sitting in the seats. Uh, and we had revival uh, there in that ballroom. <laughs> oh, yes, God doing it. We have to have the mind of the Spirit. Can't do it just like we've always done it. <laughs> Oh, no, that which is birthed in the Spirit, uh, hallelujah, will bring forth. Uh, if it's birthed in the understanding of man, if it's birthed in the reasoning of men, uh, if it's birthed, yes, uh, in the natural, uh, it doesn't make any difference how talented a man is uh, in the natural realm. He may begin at ABCs in the Spirit, uh, or even if he yields wide to the Holy Ghost, God might start him right at the top, but it'll be different knowledge and different experience than what he has in the natural. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowing the, the things of God. Oh, the things of God. That has such a broad spectrum. We don't know exactly how God's going to do this new thing. We're going to see the harvest brought in in ways that are going to just amaze us. We're going to be overwhelmed as we see what God does and how he does it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be part of it. Say it. I'm going to be a part of it. I'm going to be a part of it. I'm going to be a part of what he says. When we got in the car to go to the funeral today, 
Sister Dixie got in the fo- in the car, and she said that um, something began to be discussed about a prophetic word that Sister Jane gave at New Year's. Well, I wasn't here at New Year's, and but Sister Dixie was reminded of it the other day. You know, when we hear these words from God, we jot them down. We dr- we let them flow into our hearts. We sometimes buy the tape if we couldn't hear it all uh, so that we can re-hear it again, uh, the word of the Lord. So on the way to the funeral, we were listening to a word that Sister Jane had given on New Year's Eve in which the Lord said in November, <laughs> I'm going to send an explosion. <laughs> It'll affect the north, south, east, and west. It didn't seem to me it was just the north, south, east, and west of America. It sounded like the north, west, south, east, and west of the world. Amen. But it was going to be used of God in helping to bring a multiplication of the harvest coming in. I don't know what it could be. You and I cannot begin to imagine what God's going to do and how God's going to do it, but we're going to see. Oh, I'm seeing right now tongues of fire coming down upon the American Congress building. I'm seeing it right now on the Capitol. Oh, yes, those tongues of fire coming and sitting on our nation's Capitol. Listen, we're going to have, we're going to have holy fire coming forth in the days to come and wait that we're going to see the plan and the purposes of God accelerated, oh yes, an acceleration of the plan and the purposes of God. (laughs) I I was thinking, you know, these uh, storms that we've got coming, they're preparing the soil. Oh yes, the fallow ground's being broken up. With every storm that's coming, I tell you, our uh, the hardness of the hearts of the people, the callousness, the sophistication, uh, all of that is somehow coming down, uh, and we're seeing God begin to prepare uh, for the harvest. I was thinking tonight <coughs> when that word was given about the part of the harvest being gathered in with boats. All I could remember was what happened. I guess it was, was it November a year ago that we were in uh, Fargo? Uh, in in uh, October, October a year ago, Sister Ruth and, and uh, I, and kind of you were there. Were you there at that time? We were up in Fargo, North Dakota at a ladies' meeting. It was the last day of the ladies' meeting, been very successful, conducted by the Assemblies of God of that great church in Fargo. <coughs> it runs four or 5,000 people. And the last day, the last session, I don't remember if you got up and said something first about the Red River or if you said it later. Well, when I, when I started walking, they called me from the first row to the front, somewhere between the first row and the pulpit, and that's usually about when the sermon comes, or sometimes when you get here, but the Lord spoke to me, and he said that he was sitting on the flood, and it was such an awesome experience. It wasn't just a scripture. I heard his voice audibly, I'm sitting upon the flood and by the time I got to the pulpit uh, I had my little concordance here and I was quickly looking up the verse uh, on the Lord sitting on the flood uh, and I started to read it and all I could do was cry 
I just cried and cried and cried. It was that cry that comes in the glory in which you feel his presence in such a way. No sadness, but just that glory that's so overwhelming. And I tried to talk a little bit, couldn't talk too much. Just weeping, feeling the glory of God. Sister Ruth said to the people, she said, you know, she said, all I can remember is that old song. Remember the Red River Valley. And they said, you're in the Red River Valley. We didn't know where we were. We hadn't had a chance to look at a map. And, you know, they just fly you into the airport and take you from there to the conference center. And, and uh, <laughs> we were in the Red River Valley. We still didn't perceive the fullness of what God was saying. This was October, what would that have been, 96. April of 97, we're invited back to do a meeting in the Fargo Assembly of God Church in April. The day we arrive is the day the waters begin to rise. In fact, 10 o'clock in the morning, the pastor comes, uh, calls me downstairs into, the, into a special room. He has one of his board members with him, uh, and he says to me, Sister Ruth, we're going to have to cancel the meeting. Pastors were coming from everywhere to be there. He says, we've got to cancel this meeting. He said, the... The flood waters are rising and the young people are being uh, uh, utilized from everywhere. All the high school students are sandbagging and anybody that's able to sandbag is sandbagging. We're all so busy and we just think if we went ahead and had the meeting, uh, the people wouldn't understand us having the meeting and not sandbagging. Uh, I said, brother, whatever you feel. He said, our own house, we've got people, young people there that are sandbagging the waters within, I think he said, within 30 feet of his door. I said, well, before you take us to the airport, I said, I want to go over to the house and pray. So they arranged for us to go. When we got there, they, we saw the young people. They were so busy sandbagging. I looked, and I could see where the water was. I went inside the house and looked through the window and saw that it was so very close to the house. We just started singing in the spirit. <laughs> oh, yes, we began singing to the river. <laughs> oh, yes. Thus far and no farther. <laughs> Thus far and no farther. Oh, yes. Thus far and no farther. We were just singing to that river, declaring the purposes of God, declaring the peace over that house. Well, we, that only, we were only there about five minutes, and they rushed us off to the airport. In the meantime, when, we, when I'd gone back up to the upstairs to tell the people we were leaving, a phone call had come, and we were invited to go to a little town in Malacca, Minnesota. They had heard that the meeting was canceled, and they invited us to come. They said, we'll meet you at the Minneapolis airport. I said, well, as soon as we get to the airport and we can arrange for a flight, we'll call and let you know what flight we're coming on. They picked us up. We got up there to that meeting <laughs> just in time. The word began to spread. The meeting was being transferred to this teeny little from the 5,000-seat auditorium uh, to this little teeny church up there in Malacca, <laughs> Minnesota. They're still having revival in Minnesota. Oh, yes, a move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, God doing it differently. Uh, it was some months later that we heard uh, that every house in that area was touched by the flood except pastor's house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor's house was spared because we stood there and sang and declared thus far and no farther. Now tonight, <coughs> I could just, I tell you, we, America is going to begin to see the harvest with floods. I just could see those boats 
Those weren't fishing boats I saw. Those were rescuing boats I saw on the top of flood waters uh, across our nation. We're going to see amazing floods, uh, and in it, we're going to see the beginnings of the harvest uh, as God begins to bring it in. I, I, I just, I just saw those boats. They weren't. Uh, it wasn't just the normal, uh, normal fishing boat. It wasn't just fishers of men. We're going to be amazed at the events. I, I heard the other day they're expecting more hurricanes this season than ever before. Now we could pray against it. But I remember what year was the Andrew hurricane? Was that 94? It's around that time. We had been in a prayer meeting in Jerusalem and we began to sing about the Lord riding across the heavens by his name, Yah. And suddenly, Sister Irene, that verse from Isaiah, from Psalm 68, he rides across the heavens by his name, Yah. Suddenly, Sister Irene saw a vision of great storms coming across America and across the face of the earth. And she saw that in the midst of it, all we could do as the storms came that we stood by and we sang hallelujah. The Lord said, my people shall know me yet as Yah. Amen. One of the names of God, when we say hallelujah, we are saying praise to God. And it was such, such storms that began to come in. It was only a week or two later that Andrew hit Florida. And since that time, we have had a steady increase of the storm and the wind pattern and I believe we're going to see a further increase in these months. I believe that. I believe it's going to be part of the work of the Spirit, uh, allowing the, the fallow ground to be broken up. Uh, amen. We don't know how hearts are going to be softened. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not ours to choose the method. It is not ours to choose the way. Uh, we only can say, let God be God. Uh, let God deal with the hearts of men the way he will. Uh, amen. When it comes down to it, uh, it's the salvation of the soul of man. Man, that's the important thing. However, God is able to speak to people. We're going to be amazed as we see him do it. But he is going to bring forth by his spirit, his plan and his revelation concerning it. He will give us insight. I, I, I believe this, and I, I, I would not want to go to a church that was not flowing in a revelatory realm. If we ever needed revelation, we need it in this day and hour. Oh, yes, we need blessing, but we also need to know what God's going to do before he does it so that our hearts remain steadfast and firm, so that we are not easily shaken by the events that come upon the face of the earth. We need to know the will of God, the plan of God, how God's going to work. And through the years, we have been a blessed people because he's always told us his heart and his mind before these events have come to pass. Sometimes God doesn't tell you exactly what the explosion's going to be. Although that brother Jeff Leventhal's son, you know that story, Brother Schofield? Uh, uh, is, oh, Lowenthal, not uh, Lowenthal. He's from Philadelphia. You know that Philadelphia lawyer? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know the story about his son? No, I didn't see the book. There is a book. And there's a book that has it in it. Let me explain it to you quickly. 
I heard the story. Uh, we had the tape of Sid Roth interviewing him, Brother Jeff. It was exactly 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, that this young boy didn't seem to awaken quickly in the morning. They were at a conference, a spiritual conference, and Brother Jeff knew that he, his son hadn't been too well the night before, so instead of waking him, he let him sleep, and he was there then to hear what the boy had dreamed. And he dreamed about war in Israel, and he saw the newspaper, November 98. Now, this was 10 years ago, at least, so, you know, November 98 looked like a long way off. This may be the explosion that Sister Jane prophesied of. We don't know. But we do know this. I, I was saying to the folks uh, today, you know, when Sister Jane gave that prophecy, this was before all of the scandal had begun in Washington. This was, this was New Year's Eve. The scandal didn't begin till later that month. Uh, things could happen even in direction uh, the, with the Supreme Court and other things happening even by November. We don't know. But I tell you one thing, I'm going to get in the Spirit. <laughs> I'm going to be taught of the Spirit. Uh, this summer is going to be a summer of knowing what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Knowing the things of God by the Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. I'm not going to be too concerned about the wisdom of man. Uh, there are thousands of books I haven't read I'd like to read. Uh, I've got at least two dozen by my bed. Uh, amen. That I'd like to at least least open the cover of, but I'm not going to be too concerned. Amen. I'm going to get into the Spirit of God. God in a moment's time can drop revelation knowledge into your spirit. It becomes substance within. It is not only knowledge, but it is that which motivates you and changes you and causes you to walk in the plan and the purposes of God. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, the difficulty with that vision was this, this dream, was the little boy had the dream. If Daddy had had it, he would have already moved to Israel because revelation knowledge begins to be substance in your spirit that causes you to act upon what God is birthing within you. Oh, yes, hallelujah. God bringing into us not the knowledge of the natural, but the knowledge of the spirit, things that you and I need to know that we might be effective in this last day move of God effective in this last harvest, effective in this last day in gathering. Oh, yes, eye hath not seen, and ear hath not heard, and neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him, but they are revealed unto us by the Spirit. <laughs> For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The end, uh, end of camp meeting, God told us to keep going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We didn't know if we'd go a month, <laughs> two months, but we have gone the whole year. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I said to somebody one day, we haven't done it for them, meaning all the people out there that are hungry for God, we've done it for us. Because <laughs> through this year of waiting on God, God's been birthing understandings in our spirit. He's been removing the understandings of the flesh, causing us to come forth more and more into the understanding of the spirit, trusting the spirit in all things. <laughs> oh, yes, bringing the deep things of God forth. Uh, one of the reasons at camp meeting we're going to cancel out this year, first time in 45 years, you know, it's difficult to break tradition, but we're breaking it. Uh, 
no afternoon meeting. Why? Because we want to spend time from the morning service in the presence of God, on the floor, seated in the chair, whatever, singing in the spirit, moving in the glory, letting the spirit be our teacher, letting him open understandings in our hearts and our spirit so that at the end of the summer, They'll say, well, what did you get this summer? Knowledge of the things of God. (laughs) Oh, you know, God has to develop and cultivate our taste. Lots of things in the natural we don't like to eat. We grew up not eating them. We go out somewhere and somebody serves them and we don't want to eat them. Sometimes I say to people, oh, don't acquire that taste for salmon. That's expensive. No, no, no. If you don't like those uh, shrimp and oysters, (laughs) don't bother about cultivating a taste. They're expensive. (laughs) You know, a lot of people think they want the glory, but they really don't. They want the power that comes in the revival, uh, but they don't want the glory that comes and settles down in the soul uh, and begins to transform the natural man and make him uh, a spiritual man, uh, alive unto God in every way. But God is going to develop our spiritual taste. (laughs) Oh, yes, he's going to cultivate it. so that we desire revelation, so that we desire vision, so that we desire the liftings up into heavenly realms. He's going to do it for us. Hallelujah. Causing us to be a people that know the things of God by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man. But the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Oh, yes. Later it says, speaks about the wisdom which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We're going to be a spiritual people. (laughs) Say, I'm going to be a spiritual person. I'm I'm going to be taught of the Lord, taught of the Spirit of God. I'm going to know the things of God. (laughs) Hallelujah. If we had to list ten things of God, we'd all come up with different lists. But all that pertaineth unto him, hallelujah, he's going to teach it unto us in these days by his spirit as we hunger for the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's come forward. Sister Michelle, just give me a note and we'll sing as we're coming. Let's just stand at the altar of the Lord. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, bless the Lord. Let the river flow, let the river flow, Holy Spirit come and move in power. 
For I've seen your desire to be exact in everything. But I know how to cross the T's and I can dot the I's. Oh, you've only begun to see my imprint upon that which I am doing in the earth, saith the Lord. (laughs) But I shall bring forth my purpose and exactitude, saith the Lord. I shall not leave one jot nor one tittle out uh, until all hath been fulfilled. Oh, you shall see great fulfillment even in these days. It shall be a year of the fulfillment of the Lord. And amazed shall ye be as you shall see. I'm turning the clock of the hand. Oh, I'm accelerating everything. For man has already figured out how long the revival shall take. But I say this unto thee. They have thought it out in their own understanding. But I shall hasten, yea, the day of the Lord. And thou shalt see an exceeding acceleration even in this year, 
saith the Lord. Oh, ha, ha. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise the 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 Lord, 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 praise the Lord. Somebody that's down in pain in the left shoulder right now, the Lord's healing it. Who's that person? Had a pain in the left shoulder, but the Lord's healing it right now. <laughs> oh, receive it in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 There's somebody here that your eyes are seemingly to get more and more fuzzy. That's the only word I know to describe it. You've been thinking you need a change of glasses. But God's healing you tonight. Who's that person? Amen. Just raise the other hand and receive it. <laughs> oh, receive the miracle in the name of the Lord. Receive it in the name of the Lord. Be healed 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 in the name of the Lord. Be Ya 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 Be healed in the name of the Lord. Be healed in the name of the Lord. Be healed in the name of the Lord. Be healed. 